Hey everyone, this is Tom Kraz. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at Android application security testing with OWASP Zap and Android Studio. So let's get started. In order to set all of this up, we need a couple of things. First of all, we need to get our hands on Android Studio. This is not an instructional video on how to install and configure Android Studio, although it's pretty straightforward. You download it, I download it into a folder in my home drive called Android, with a small a. You go into the bin directory. Also it, in the Android folder with a capital A, it automatically installs the Android development kit, which we will need later on. So Android Studio, bin, you'll find a file called studio.sh, run as a program. This will take a couple of minutes to get, st well, a couple of seconds to get started. Let's going okay so this is an interface for configuring Android applications but all we're interested in is an Android virtual device so let's create one we're going to create a pixel 6 device because it's low on resources and my system isn't exactly overpowered and um, if you notice that the version of Android we're going to choose here is Android 11 um, let's give it a name Okay, so we're pretty much done with Android Studio. Let's close it down. Okay, we need to open a terminal and we need to install the, Anbro the ADB tool. Update our system first. And apt install ADB. ADB is the Android debug bridge. This allows us to connect to Android devices from the command line and, and control them. Okay, so we talked earlier on about the Android development kit, so let's go into that folder. It's in your home directory under Android SDK, and then there's a folder called Emulator, and inside there, there is a tool called Emulator. Um, I would advise you to stay in this folder and do not change directory. Let's list the devices we have. We have AppTest 101. So this app test uh, one on one is the first one we're going to use. So let's start it up. We select it with the AVD command option, and we'll use the uh, writable system option because we need to modify the system folder to add our CA certs later on. Okay. So we'll speed this section up a bit because on my slow machine it took ages to boot. Okay, there we go, we have a working Android device. Let's open up a web browser, take a look at the site, make sure we have connectivity. Perfect. So you, you use the mouse button like your finger. Um, I'm finding it a little bit tricky, to be honest, but we shall persevere. So I'm going to open up another terminal here, and we're going to use ADB in order to connect to our Android device, so we can pass commands into it. Let's make a working directory called WIP, and we, we put all our files we need in here, so ADB devices. So the emulator 5550, 5554 is, is a device that sees attached. It's not the same name as we gave it in Android Studio, but what can you do? As there is only one device, we don't need to dictate to the ADB command where which device to use. Okay. So we can connect with the shell command, have a look at uptime, run and just exit. Let's make sure all the commands we're running are run as the root user. So we type ADB, ADB root. And uh, we need to disable the Android verified boot as well. There's a couple of commands to do this. ADB shell, AVBCCL, disable verification. And we also need to disable the virtue. Just a word of warning, if you don't disable those two things, the system will not reboot afterwards. 
so we do a reboot um, we'll speed it up uh, you can look up if you go over to my blog you'll find a little bit more information about the, the verification and the verity just for now you have to do this or the system will not reboot afterwards you will completely destroy it and you'll have to start from scratch again okay so we're back Let's just make sure any of the ADB commands we use are run as root, and let's do an ADB remount. The remount um, makes read only file systems read writable. Okay, so let's get a copy of our CA certificate inside um, Zap. We'll go to service certificates, we'll save it, we'll go to our WIP folder and just save it in there. Next step is to upload this file onto our device. So we can use adb push. There's our file. adb push. And we'll put it in the SD card download folder. Okay. So we head over to our Android device. We go into settings, we scroll down to security. Inside security you'll see an encryption and credential section, you need to go in there. If you go into trusted credentials, you will see that we have no user cert at all. And in the system certs, which are the certs that are trusted by the applications, we have no entry for O W A S P S A P. N N O. Yeah, nothing there. Okay. Let's add our cert. Install a certificate. It's a CA certificate. Install anyway. We go into the root folder, Android SDK build folder. Go into download and you'll find our cert. Click it and just like that it's installed. Let's go back into the encryption and credentials section take a look at our trusted credentials and under user you see our OWASP root certificate and in our system credentials it's not there. So let's test it out. We need to go into the settings for the virtual machine and we need to make sure that our proxy settings are the same as what's in Zap. Let's see what it says in Zap. Tools, Options, Local Servers Proxy. We have Localhost and 80, Port 8080. Let's just make sure the settings in our Android virtual device are the same. Manual proxy localhost 8080, perfect. Let's apply that. Now, let's open up a web browser. Let's see if it's still working. Okay, Google still works, and inside Zap, in the proxy history, we can see that the browser is proxying HTTP and HTTPS traffic through Zap and we're capturing everything. Now this is fine, user certificates are okay for web traffic but when it comes to applications it will not work. So we've got to pretty much copy the certificate that we've already uploaded and put it into our system CA cert folder. So let's download it. They're all kept in the same directory called uh, CA certs added. And we take a we download that directory, take a look at the certs inside, and we see one called 97DF, blah blah blah. Let's do the strings on it. Confirm, yes, it's an OWASP Z attack proxy root certificate. It's perfect. Uh, you notice that it has a different name than the one we uploaded. This is because it creates a name out of a hash, but this is not something that's important to us now. You can do this with the OpenSSL command if you want. So let's push this up into the system folder where the system trusted certs are. Let's 
That looks good. And now we've got to reboot the device. Now I'm going to speed up this section a little bit because, as mentioned previously, my machine is not that powerful and it just takes a while to do the reboot. Okay, we're back. Let's take a look. Settings. Let's take a look at the CA search now and see if our W or OWASP ZAP proxy or ZAP is in our trusted credentials. So we know it's in our user credentials. Let's see if it copied over successfully. Oh, too far back. I hate using this mouse. Fingers are so much better. There it is. So it works. Um, this pretty much means that now all of our traffic will route its HTTPS and HTTP traffic through Zap. But let's test it out. So we'll sort out our Zap history screen first. Uh, let's take a look at the website. So are we still routing HTTP traffic via the web browser? Let's take a look at yahoo.com. Yes, it's flying up there. So many URLs being opened for web pages. So they're still being open even though I minimized the window. So we've got to close it. Um, ah, it's not so easy to do with a mouse. Come on. There you go. And there you go. Closed. Right, so um, at this stage, I think we should install our own app and see how we're getting on. So FDroid is an open source app store for Android, which is which replaces um, the Google Play Store. And let's just install it and see if we're catching the traffic. So we download it, copy it over to our WIP folder. Select. Close, close. Now, oh, let's go back, see if it's in our directory. Oh, in the wrong directory, up one. So let's do, let's do an install. There is their F-Droid APK. Installs very quickly. Let's take a look at, it's there in our um, app. Let's take a look at um, Zap History folder and open it up and see what happens. Oh, and immediately we can see the app is reaching back to fdroid.org to pull down a jar file. I see that the jar file is 8 megabytes in size. I mean, we can see the URL for that jar file, so we could probably pull it down with a wget. Let's see. Yeah, you can pull it down. Interesting. And we can see it's there. A jar file is just a zip file with a different extension you can use on zip to, to unpack it. If you're interested in looking inside it, looks like it's a manifest for all the applications that come installed with F-Droid. Uh, my Android machine is painfully slow and it's taking a while to update the repositories, but I'm sure it will finish in a minute. There we go. Perfect. So let's just, for example, download an application. I don't even know what this is, feeder. Awesome lib li Libre and open source feeder. But let's install it and see if what we're seeing in the Zap history right now. So we can see, can we see the APK being downloaded? Um, and that looks like... Yeah, so there it is there, we can see the APK itself, where we can download it, we can see it's 14 megabytes in size. Uh, that's a 404, so I don't know what it's doing there. It's trying to get it off a mirror. Um, there's the APK there, but it's zero bytes, and that's our one there. 14 megabytes in size. Success. And we have the full URL, we could download it if we wanted to. Ah, over on our phone, I see that we're not allowed to install on our apps. Let's just install it anyway. I'm not sure what happened there. Settings. 
powerful source. Install. Yeah, we can actually see that it's uploading to uh, Google APIs that we've installed this app. Interesting. And yeah, pretty much we're done. Look, um, it was just an example of an app. Uh, I just picked any random one just to show you that it's working. You can now continue to install your own app and use Zap to um, capture all the traffic that passes through it. My name is Tom Kraz. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, I hope you liked this video. And if you would like to leave a comment below, feel welcome. Please like and subscribe. And I will catch you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.